The leading metric that is most useful at this time is our positivity rate. And between Friday and Monday, this ranged from 20.6% to 27.1% with an average of 23.5%. As the minister mentioned, there are currently 956 people with COVID-19 in hospital, including 56 in the ICU. Sadly, since Friday, an average of five deaths per day related to COVID-19 have been reported to Alberta Health. These individuals were between the ages of 54 and 94. This is a reminder of the fact that this infection is still a significant threat to many of us, our families and our friends. It's important to take this seriously as we move into activities we haven't done for a while and consider how best to support those around us to mitigate the risks. My thoughts are with anyone who has recently lost a loved one, whether to COVID or any other cause. First, it's important to remember that many viruses constantly change through mutations. This is to be expected, especially with a virus as transmissible and prevalent as the one that causes COVID-19. This is why since the start of the pandemic, we have been actively monitoring the genetic code of the SARS-CoV-2 virus in the province. This has helped us to understand how the virus is evolving in our population and to detect the arrival of variant strains from outside the province. As we've seen over the last two years, some variants emerge and disappear without large impacts, while others persist and become dominant like Delta and Omicron. Currently, all COVID-19 cases identified through PCR tests are screened for variants of concern and our variant screening and sequencing for genomic surveillance picks up variants and subvariants, including BA2. As of March 21st, approximately 60% of positive cases are BA2, so it is now the dominant strain of Omicron in the province. Although inherently more transmissible than BA1, so far there is no evidence of it causing more severe disease than BA1 based on clinical data from South Africa, the United Kingdom, Denmark, and Ontario. While this is good news, we only have to look back to the fifth wave to see that a virus that is more transmissible can cause a large impact at a population level, even if the risk of severe outcomes are the same or lower for individuals. Therefore, we should expect to see transmission trending upwards in the coming weeks meaning that those at risk of severe outcomes should revisit their precautionary measures and those who have not yet gotten their booster dose should do so as soon as possible. This is particularly important for those who are 65 or older or those who have medical conditions like COPD or diabetes that put them at higher risk for severe outcomes. There have been a lot of questions about whether we will be expanding eligibility for fourth doses to those who have had their third booster many months ago. We have taken this question to our Alberta Advisory Committee on Immunization several times, and their advice so far is aligned with the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, which is to offer a fourth dose at this time only to those with significant immunocompromising conditions who had a primary series with three doses. Our data from the fifth wave showed that three doses in other groups continued to provide a high level of protection against severe outcomes. There has been much discussion about data from Israel and the US on fourth doses. And while we are watching this closely, it is also important to remember that vaccine series spacing in Canada used a longer interval between first and second doses than was used in these other countries. We now know that the longer interval provided a higher level of protection, and it is not yet clear how that plays out <coughs> over time. I've also heard questions about those who got AstraZeneca vaccine last spring and then received mRNA vaccine with a final dose more than five months ago. There are questions about whether this particular group should get a fourth dose, and this question was also taken to our advisory committee. At this time, the recommendation for this group remains the same as for others. Those who got AstraZeneca and then one or more doses of mRNA vaccine more than five months ago are not recommended to have additional doses if they have already had a total of three doses of vaccine. We continue to monitor the evidence very carefully and to listen to the advice of our provincial and national advisory committees. We will inform Albertans of any changes to fourth dose recommendations and eligibility whenever they are made.